Alfred Zinnemann, Wikipedia Audio Alfred Zinnemann was an Austrian-born American film director. He won four Academy Awards for directing films in various genres, including thrillers, westerns, film noir, and play adaptations. He made 25 feature films during his 50-year career. He was among the first directors to insist on using authentic locations and for mixing stars with civilians to give his films more realism. Within the film industry, he was considered a maverick for taking risks and thereby creating unique films, with many of his stories being dramas about lone and principled individuals tested by tragic events. According to one historian, Zinnemann's style demonstrated his sense of psychological realism and his apparent determination to make worthwhile pictures that are nevertheless highly entertaining. Some of his most notable films were The Men, High Noon, From Here to Eternity, Oklahoma, The Nun's Story, A Man for All Seasons, The Day of the Jackal, and Julia. His films have received 65 Oscar nominations, winning 24. Early Life Zinnemann directed and introduced a number of stars in their U.S. film debuts, including Marlon Brando, Rod Steiger, Pierre Angeli, Julie Harris, Brandon DeWilde, Montgomery Clift, Shirley Jones, and Meryl Streep. He directed 19 actors to Oscar nominations, including Frank Sinatra, Montgomery Clift, Audrey Hepburn, Glynis Johns, Paul Schofield, Robert Shaw, Wendy Hiller, Jason Roberts, Vanessa Redgrave, Jane Fonda, Gary Cooper, and Maximilian Schell. Zinnemann was born in Vienna, the son of Anna and Oscar Zinnemann, a doctor. His family was Jewish and he had one younger brother. While growing up in Austria, he wanted to become a musician, but went on to graduate with a law degree from the University of Vienna in 1927. While studying law, he became drawn to films and convinced his parents to let him study film production in Paris. After studying for a year at the École Technique de Photographie et Cinématographie in Paris, he became a cameraman and found work on a number of films in Berlin, before immigrating to Hollywood. Both of his parents were killed during the Holocaust, 86. Zinnemann worked in Germany with several other beginners after he studied filmmaking in France. His penchant for realism and authenticity is evident in his first feature The Wave, shot on location in Mexico with mostly non-professional actors recruited among the locals, which is one of the earliest examples of social realism in narrative film. Earlier in the decade, in fact, Zinnemann had worked with documentarian Robert Flaherty, probably the greatest single influence on my work as a filmmaker he said. Although he was fascinated by the arts culture in Germany, with its theater, music, and films, he was also aware that the country was in a deep economic crisis. He became disenchanted with Berlin after continually seeing decadent ostentation and luxury existing alongside desperate unemployment. The wealthy classes were moving more to the political right and the poor to the left. Emotion had long since begun to displace reason, he said, 16 as a result of the changing political climate, along with the fact that sound films had arrived in Europe, which was technically unprepared to produce their own, film production throughout Europe slowed dramatically. Zinnemann, then only 21, got his parents' permission to go to America where he hoped filmmaking opportunities would be greater, 16. He arrived in New York at the end of October, 1929, at the time of the stock market crash. Despite the financial panic then beginning, he found New York to be a different cultural environment, 17. 
New York was a terrific experience, full of excitement, with the vitality and pace then totally lacking in Europe. It was as though I had just left a continent of zombies and entered a place humming with incredible energy and power, 17. He took a Greyhound bus to Hollywood a few months later following the completion of his first directorial effort for the Mexican cultural protest film, The Wave, in Alvarado, Mexico. He established residence in North Hollywood with Henwar Rodakiuas, Gunter von Fritsch and Ned Scott, all fellow contributors to the Mexican project. One of Zinimon's first jobs in Hollywood was as an extra in All Quiet on the Western Front. He says that many of the other extras were former Russian aristocrats and high-ranking officers who fled to America after the Russian Revolution in 1917, 23. He was 22 but he said he felt older than the 40-year-olds in Hollywood. But he was jubilant because he was then certain that this was the place one could breathe free and belong. 18 But after a few years he became disillusioned with the limited talents of Hollywood's elites. Career as Director After some directing success with short films, he graduated to features in 1942, turning out two crisp B-mysteries. Eyes in the Night and Kid Glove Killer before getting his big break with The Seventh Cross, starring Spencer Tracy, which became his first hit. The film was based on Anna Seger's novel and, while filmed entirely on the MGM backlot, made realistic use of refugee German actors in even the smallest roles. The central character an escaped prisoner played by Tracy is seen as comparatively passive and fatalistic. He is, however, the subject of heroic assistance from anti-Nazi Germans. In a sense, the protagonist of the film is not the Tracy character but a humble German worker played by Hume Cronin who changes from Nazi sympathizer to active opponent of the regime as he aids Tracy. After World War II, Zinimon learned that both of his parents had died in the Holocaust, 86 he was further frustrated by his studio contract, which dictated that he did not have a choice in directing films like My Brother Talks to Horses and Little Mr. Jim despite his lack of interest in their subject matter. However, his next film, The Search, won an Oscar for screenwriting and secured his position in the Hollywood establishment. Shot in war-ravaged Germany, the film stars Montgomery Clift in his screen debut as a GI who cares for a lost Czech boy traumatized by the war. It was followed by Act of Violence, a gritty film noir starring Van Heflin as a haunted pow, Robert Ryan as his hot-tempered former friend, Janet Lee as Heflin's wife, and Mary Astor as a sympathetic prostitute. Zinimon considered Act of Violence the first project in which he felt comfortable knowing exactly what I wanted and exactly how to get it. In the critically acclaimed The Men, starring newcomer Marlon Brando as a paraplegic war veteran, Zinimon filmed many scenes in a California hospital where real patients served as extras. The film is noted for giving Brando his first screen role. It was followed by Teresa, starring Pierre Angeli. Perhaps Zinimon's best-known work to come out of the 1950s is High Noon, one of the first 25 American films chosen in 1989 for the National Film Registry. With its psychological and moral examinations of its lawman hero Marshall Will Kane, played by Gary Cooper and its innovative chronology whereby screen time approximated the 80-minute countdown to the confrontational hour, the film broke the mold of the formulaic western. Working closely with cinematographer and longtime friend Floyd Crosby, he shot without filters, giving the landscape a harsh newsreel quality that clashed with the more painterly cinematography of John Ford's westerns.
During production he established a strong rapport with Gary Cooper, photographing the aging actor in many tight clothes UPS which showed him sweating, and at one point, even crying on screen. Screenwriter Carl Foreman apparently intended High Noon to be an allegory of Senator Joseph McCarthy's vendetta against alleged communists. However, Zinimon disagreed, insisting, late in life, that the issues in the film, for him, were broader, and were more about conscience and independent, uncompromising fearlessness. He says, High Noon is not a Western, as far as I'm concerned, it just happens to be set in the Old West. Film critic Stephen Prince suggests that the character of Kane actually represents Zinimon, who tried to create an atmosphere of impending threat on the horizon, a fear of potential fascism, represented by the gang of killers soon arriving. Zinimon explained the general context for many of his films, one of the crucial things today trying to preserve our civilization. 86 Prince adds that Zinimon, having learned that both his parents died in the Holocaust, wanted Cain willing to fight rather than run, unlike everyone else in town. As a result, Zinimon allies himself with the film's hero. 86 Zinimon explains the theme of the film and its relevance to modern times. Early Career 1940s I saw it as a great movie yarn, full of enormously interesting people, only later did it dawn on me that this was not a regular Western myth. There was something timely and timeless about it, something that had a direct bearing on life today. To me it was the story of a man who must make a decision according to his conscience. His town symbol of a democracy gone soft faces a horrendous threat to its people's way of life. Determined to resist, and in deep trouble, he moves all over the place looking for support but finding that there is nobody who will help him, each has a reason of his own for not getting involved. In the end, he must meet his chosen fate all by himself, his town's doors and windows firmly locked against him. It is a story that still happens everywhere, every day, 96-97. 1950s 1960s 1970s 1980s Final Years and Death for his screen adaptation of the play The Member of the Wedding, Zinimon chose the 26-year-old Julie Harris as the film's 12-year-old protagonist, although she had created the role on Broadway just as the two other leading actors, Ethel Waters and Brandon DeWilde, had. Zinimon's next film, From Here to Eternity, based on the novel by James Jones, was nominated for 13 Academy Awards and would go on to win eight, including Best Picture and Best Director. Zinimon fought hard with producer Harry Cohn to cast Montgomery Clift as the character of Pruitt, although Frank Sinatra, who was at the lowest point of his popularity, cast himself in the role of Maggio against Zinimon's wishes. Sinatra would later win an Oscar for Best Supporting Actor. From Here to Eternity also featured Deborah Kerr, best known for prim and proper roles, as a philandering army wife. Donna Reed played the role of Alma Laureen Burke, a prostitute and mistress of Montgomery Clift's character which earned her an Academy Award for Best Supporting Actress for 1953. Oklahoma, Zinimon's version of the Rogers and Hammerstein musical, is noted for the widescreen format Todd A.O. making its debut, as did the film's young star, Shirley Jones. It was also an expression of Zinimon's continued faith and optimism about America, with its energy and exuberance. 3. Directing Style 
His next film was A Hat Full of Rain, starring Don Murray, Eva Marie Saint and Anthony Franciosa, and was based on the play by Michael V. Gazzo. It is a drama story about a young married man with a secret morphine addiction who tries to quit and suffers through painful withdrawal symptoms. The film was a risk for Zaniman, since movie depictions of drug addiction and withdrawal was rare in the 1950s. 3. Zaniman rounded out the 1950s with The Nun's Story, casting Audrey Hepburn in the role of Sister Luke a nun who eventually gives up the religious life to join the Belgian resistance in the Second World War. The film was based on the life of Marie-Louise Habitz. Hepburn, who gave up the chance to play Anne Frank in order to work on the nun's story, considered the film to be her best and most personal work. Zinnemann's style of cutting from close-up to close-up was heavily influenced by Carl Theodor Dreyer's Passion of Joan of Arc, his favorite film. He was grateful that Hepburn was easy to work with. I have never seen anyone more disciplined, more gracious or more dedicated to her work than Audrey. There was no ego, no asking for extra favors there was the greatest consideration for her co-workers, 166. The Sundowners, starring Robert Mitchum and Deborah Kerr as an Australian outback husband and wife, led to more Academy Award nominations, including Best Picture, Best Director, Best Screenplay, Best Actress, and Best Supporting Actress, but won none. Behold a Pale Horse was a post-Spanish Civil War epic based on the book Killing a Mouse on Sunday by Emmerich Pressburger and starred Gregory Peck, Anthony Quinn, and Omar Sharif, but was both a critical and commercial flop. Zaniman would later admit that the film didn't really come together. In 1965 he was a member of the jury at the 4th Moscow International Film Festival. Zaniman's fortunes changed once again with A Man for All Seasons, scripted by Robert Bolt from his own play and starring Paul Schofield as Sir Thomas More, portraying him as a man driven by conscience to his ultimate fate. The film went on to win six Academy Awards, including Best Picture, Best Actor, and Best Director, Zaniman's second such Oscar to date. The film was also entered into the 5th Moscow International Film Festival. After this, Zaniman was all set to direct an adaptation of Man's Fate for MGM. However, the project was shut down in 1969, and the studio attempted to hold Zaniman responsible for at least $1 million of the $3.5 million that had already been spent on pre-production. In protest, Zaniman filed a lawsuit against the studio, and it would be four years before he would make his next film. Honors and Awards By the early 1970s, Zaniman had been out of work since the cancellation of Man's Fate, he believed it had marked the end of an era in picture-making and the dawn of a new one when lawyers and accountants began to replace showman as head of the studios and when a handshake was a handshake no longer. However, Universal then offered him the chance to direct The Day of the Jackal, based on the best-selling suspense novel by Frederick Forsyth. The film starred Edward Fox as an Englishman who is relentlessly driven to complete his mission to try to kill French President Charles de Gaulle, and Michael Lonsdale as the French detective hired to stop him. Zaniman was intrigued by the opportunity to direct a film in which the audience would already be able to guess the ending, and was pleased when it ultimately became a hit with the public. The Day of the Jackal was followed four years later by Julia, based on a story in the book Pentimento by Lillian Hellman. The film starred Jane Fonda as Hellman and Vanessa Redgrave as her best friend Julia, 
a doomed American heiress who forsakes the safety and comfort of great wealth to devote her life to the anti-Nazi cause in Germany. The film was nominated for 11 Academy Awards and won three, for Best Screenplay, Best Supporting Actor, and Best Supporting Actress for Red Grave, who drew scattered boos on Oscar night for her Zionist hoodlums acceptance speech. Zinimon felt that Fonda's acting was extraordinary and she also deserved an Oscar. 226. Filmography Zinimon's final film was Five Days One Summer, filmed in Switzerland and based on the short story Maiden, Maiden by Kay Boyle. It starred Sean Connery and Betsy Brantley as a couple vacationing in the Alps in the 1930s and a young Lambert Wilson as a mountain-climbing guide who grows heavily suspicious of their relationship. The film was both a critical and commercial flop, although Zinimon would be told by various critics in later years that they considered it an underrated achievement. Zinimon blamed the film's critical and commercial failure for his retirement from filmmaking, I'm not saying it was a good picture but there was a degree of viciousness in the reviews. The pleasure some people took in tearing down the film really hurt. Zinimon is often regarded as striking a blow against ageism in Hollywood. The apocryphal story goes that, in the 1980s, during a meeting with a young Hollywood executive, Zinimon was surprised to find the executive didn't know who he was despite having won four Academy Awards, and directing many of Hollywood's biggest films. When the young executive Callaly asked Zinimon to list what he had done in his career, Zinimon delivered an elegant comeback by reportedly answering, Sure. You first. In Hollywood, the story is known as You First and is often alluded to when veteran creators find that upstarts are unfamiliar with their work. Feature Films Short Films Zinimon insisted, I've been trying to disown that story for years. It seems to me Billy Wilder told it to me about himself. Zinimon died of a heart attack in London, England on March 14. 1997. He was 89 years old. His wife died on December 18, 1997. Zinimon's training in documentary filmmaking and his personal background contributed to his style as a social realist. With his early films between 1937 and 1942 he began using that technique and with High Noon in 1952, possibly his finest film, he created the tense atmosphere by coordinating screen time with real time. Because he started his film career as a cameraman, his movies are strongly oriented toward the visual aspects. He also says that regardless of the size of an actor's part, he spends much time discussing the roles with each actor separately and in depth. In this way we make sure long before the filming starts that we are on the same wavelength, he says, 223. Zinimon's films are mostly dramas about lone and principled individuals tested by tragic events, including High Noon, From Here to Eternity, The Nun's Story, a Man for All Seasons, and Julia. Regarded as a consummate craftsman, Zinimon traditionally endowed his work with meticulous attention to detail to create realism, and had an intuitive gift for casting and a preoccupation with the moral dilemmas of his characters. His philosophy about directing influenced director Alan Parker. My mentor was the great director, Fred Zinimon whom I used to show all my films to until he died. He said something to me that I always try to keep in my head every time I decide on what film to do next. He told me that making a film was a great privilege, and you should never waste it. In From Here to Eternity, for example, 
he effectively added actual newsreel footage of the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor, which enhanced and dramatized the story. Similarly, in A Hat Full of Rain, he used a documentary style to present real-life drug addiction in New York. Zinni Monaghan incorporated newsreel footage in Behold a Pale Horse, about the Spanish Civil War. The Day of the Jackal, a political thriller about an attempt to assassinate Charles de Gaulle, was shot on location in newsreel style, while Julia placed the characters in authentic settings, as in a suspenseful train journey from Paris to Moscow during World War II. According to one historian, Zinimon's style demonstrates the director's sense of psychological realism and his apparent determination to make worthwhile pictures that are nevertheless highly entertaining.